assalamu alaikum welcome in this third session and in this uh, lecture we are going to further focus on the uh, definition of the word from uh, phonetic and phonological uh, approach <laughs> there are <clears throat> before we begin uh, the chapter it is very important for you to understand that phonetic and phonology is uh, quite uh, technical because you need to visualize the articulatory movements of your tongue, lips and everything you need to imagine like that. And similarly, this is not the explanation of phonetics and phonology. It is actually how phonetics and phonology uh, deals with uh, the definition of the word according to the author. So it is very important that uh, you should keep in your mind certain terms which are present in this session. Let's begin. The definition, some languages have vowel harmony and uh, some have uh, similar vowel and uh, some are very different. So, like, but <clears throat> some phonetic features like openness, closeness, frontness, backness, rounding and unrounding. Let us focus on phonetic and phonological definitions of word. Some languages have vowel harmony in which sequences of vowels are similar in some phonetic features. For example, openness, closeness, frontness, backness, rounding and unrounding. Uh, first two uh, show the position of tongue and the last two rounding and uh, unrounding, uh, they show the shape of the, you know, lips. But actually, the writers does not accept this. Uh, like this feature is not often a characteristic of a word. I mean, it may not be uh, defined as a word. Let's see next. Uh, comparing Turkish and uh, English language. So, as I earlier told you that you need to focus on the sound that I am going to produce rather than I am mean, trying to get uh, lost in the uh, text and by this way getting confused about this. So let's see. I, my I, my way, my daughter, my house, my house, my I, my eye, my daughter, my daughter. So this is about the stress pattern. Whether you are trying to put the stress on the first or on the last word. So this is something. So other languages have fixed stress. And the stress falls on a you know, particular syllable of a word. So the first, perhaps the first or the last, as I indicated you in my pronunciation. And then, in English, it is always unpredictable. I mean, stress is always unpredictable. Sometimes it is on the first or sometimes it is, you know, on the last stress on the word. Let's begin next. The, the first stress is actually the full stress. So let's examine. But it can be argued. It means it is a debatable. I mean it is not final. What is not final? Blackbird, blackboard, greenhouse. If they are spoken like blackbird, blackboard, greenhouse. I mean in a way that spaces may be noted, our stretches during the sound may show some separation of the sound. So, 
may be two. These are known as two words. So here also there is a defect in uh, trying to find the definition. I mean, it may be the single or it may be two words. So there is no consistent relation between stress pattern. It has shown that stress pattern is not under a particular rule in English language. It depends upon the speaker, what speaker, you know, prefers and how he opts to uh, simply uh, focus on the first or the last stress. So similarly, the White House. So the is uh, almost missing in the song. White House, the White House, the White House. And is pronounced as if White House. Uh, means the is missing. Word one word. And we may compare. Similarly, tabletop, cushion cover, shoe polish, beehive, cowshed, bird cage, bird cage, cow shed, cow shed, bird cage, beehive, beehive. So uh, the uh, you know syllable and the pattern in which the stresses take place. Next. Now we are going to focus juncture. Juncture shows some pauses based on some certain syllables. So English has junctures, but the junctures are always identical because they do not show any confusion. Uh, it is because of the pauses and the, because of the stresses. That stuff, that stuff, a nice cake, an ice cake, keeps sticking, keeps stick, keeps sticking, gray day, gray day. So, I mean, it may be perceived in a way when you try to pronounce it or when you try to produce a certain uh, you know sound uh, focusing on the stress so it depends now the vowels and the consonants of each pair are identical but here actually the third one it has been uh, given some certain reason uh, how how ha sound is uh, articulated like ta sound. So this is but it is a bit uh, uh, you know not easy for you to give an example but you can later on feel it. Now the most important unfortunately the word division is not always signaled by the juncture. It says that it is not necessary that the word division may determine that it is a juncture. For although the first two syllables of a tag and at, actin, uh, and di are different, there is no difference between a tag, attack, attack, attack. So it depends upon attack, 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 attack. So try to distinguish the sound which I am trying to produce under some articulatory uh, rules. Next, and the similar examples. Now the similarly, the potato. Uh, there is no way of showing the division in between the and potato. I mean, we are not going to read it, the potato. We are going to read it the potato, the potato, the potato, the seems to be a very, very missing, uh, you know, end song, but uh, so that it may produce a single song. So, and it also further uh, shows that rather than between the po tato, I mean, in between po and tato, or it may be in between the Port at all. So, some of these, you know, during pronunciation, during sound production, I mean, it doesn't happen like that. Similarly, 
all the same reason although that allow us to distinguish attack and attack from an autumn moreover for many people at all is pronounced as if it were at all at all at all instead of pronouncing at all at all at all so it seems like like the boy is a tall a tall boy a tall boy it means so <clears throat> the reason here is that at all is treated as if it were a single word like nearly or wholly at all at all it is treated like a single but uh, due to the space which we find in writing convention these are two words so this is what has been explained here it means there is no consistent rule in phonetics and phonological definitions about the word and particularly in spoken or in speech after, after having gone, gone through uh, both the approaches semantic and uh, phonetic uh, frank palmer concludes uh, with, with the words, words and uh, with the question also we must ask however whether this is really re relevant even if we had clear features of sound marking of words would they then define words or should we look over self for definitions i mean showing uncertainty about uh, any definition <laughs> finally the statement is phonetic definitions of the word are perhaps as irrelevant as semantic ones the word ought to be def to be definable as a grammatical unit so in the third in the next session we are going to focus how uh from a grammatical unit uh, the definitions may be perfect so that's all for today by god willing in the next session we are going to complete uh the topic word with the last definition thank you